Molecular Representations We've already seen that chemical formulas by themselves can be ambiguous. For instance, if we have a molecule whose chemical formula is C3H8O, there are actually three ways we can draw it. We could go C-C-C-O for our backbone, which would give us a Lewis structure that looks like this. This is one propanol. We could also make the hydroxyl group a side chain. Finally, we could make an ether with a bridging oxygen. Oh, this one is called 2-propanol. Right, so 1-propanol and 2-propanol. And if we did 3-propanol, that would be the same as 1-propanol. Just flip the molecule over. Here's an ether we could do. like so, and that is ethyl methyl ether. So three possibilities from that molecular formula C3H8O. And you probably got tired of waiting for me to draw all those hydrogens. They really do take a while. That's why um, a condensed structure or a partially condensed structure is nicer. By the way, the structures I've just shown are Lewis structures. For the partially condensed structure, we can go like this, H3C to CH to OH to CH3. And if we're feeling like it, we can draw in the lone pairs. That takes a lot less time to do because you're not drawing in every single hydrogen you're using subscripts. So partially condensed structure is much more friendly. Um, and it contains all the information that a Lewis structure does. Now you can make a fully condensed structure by getting rid of all the dashes. So that would be CH3, CH, and then the OH in parentheses, since it's a side group, and then CH3. Now the fully condensed structure, it's easy to do with just a keyboard. But now you're kind of having to rely on what you already know about structure. None of these is my favorite. What I prefer is called a bond line structure. Here I've got a 3D model of 2-propanol. And if we're looking at it from this angle, it looks a lot like a Lewis structure. So you can see, I've drawn the Lewis structure right next to it. The gray spheres represent carbon atoms. The red sphere represents an oxygen. See it over here? And then the white spheres represent hydrogens, which are drawn in around there. However, if we change the angle that we're looking at this molecule, Instead of looking at it from the top, we look at it from the side. Then we see this image. So let's go back to the notebook and draw that. So there's our 3D model from the side. So I can draw that. I can go H to C, H, H to C, to O, H to H. There's the carbon on the right with its two hydrogens. And that. 
So this is essentially just like a Lewis structure in, in that you have to draw all those hydrogens out. Now, a bond line structure omits hydrogens that are bound to carbon. So hydrogens that are bound to carbon are not going to be shown in a bond line structure, but they will be understood to be there. Just remember that carbons with fewer than four bonds have hidden hydrogens on them, or hydrogens that are not shown. But we also show the hydrogens on heteroatoms. So we're not going to show any of the hydrogens that are on the carbon-carbon backbone, right? But we are going to show the um, hydrogens that are attached to oxygen. So let's try redrawing that. So this is what we've got. And really what we want to do is focus on this carbon-carbon backbone. And it's still a lot of work to draw all those letters, especially if you have more than three carbons. So we're going to make another uh, change. So instead of drawing the carbon atoms explicitly, we're going to just say, hey, anytime you've got an end of a zigzag or a corner of a zigzag, that's a carbon atom and it has four bonds. Any bonds that aren't shown are to hydrogen. So that takes us to this. And that, my friends, is a lot less work. For instance, this compound, 3-methylpentane, imagine if you had to draw the entire Lewis structure for this thing. I quickly get tired of drawing in all these hydrogens. I imagine you will too. Wouldn't it be easier to just do this? I think the bond line structure is much easier. When you're drawing bond line structures, draw all sp2 and sp3 hybridized atoms in a zigzag format. So, count the carbon atoms, one, two, three, four. That means we need a zigzag like this, one, two, three, four. This is actually three strokes of the pen. The first stroke is one and two. The second stroke is three, and the third stroke is four. So just remember that also. And um, let's see here. Here's a more complicated one with a heteroatom. One, two, three, four carbons in the main chain with a methyl group on carbon three and a carbonyl on carbon four. One, two, three, four. There's our double bond between carbons one and two. There's our carbonyl, and it's customary to draw in this hydrogen, although you don't have to. So one, two, three, four carbons. And you don't have to draw it exactly this way. That is to say, the angle you draw things isn't super important. You could also go like this. They're the same exact thing. Look. One, two, three, four carbons. Okay. Um, when you have uh, carbon atoms that are sp hybridized, as when you have a triple bond, or any carbon that has two pi bonds on it is sp hybridized, those bond angles are always 180 degrees. So that's the one time you don't draw the chain with a zigzag. So let's see, let's number one, two, three, four, five. So this is what our 
bond line structure looks like. This is carbon number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. So just don't get tripped up by the fact that there are carbon atoms here and here, and they're sp2 hybridized, and it's not necessarily a corner like you're used to with sp3 and sp2 hybridized carbons. Rule number two. You want your carbon-carbon backbone to reflect as closely as possible the actual geometry of the molecule. So when you're drawing double bonds, draw them all as far apart as possible, reflecting the fact that the uh, molecular shape of double-bonded carbons is um, trigonal planar with sp hybridization. So, um, for instance, the molecule acetone, CH3, C... O C H three. You would draw like this, right? That's the right way to do it. You would not want to draw it like this. That is the wrong way to do it, right? You want it to be trigonal planar. You want it to satisfy the ideas of Vesper theory, where the electron groups are as far away as possible. Here's another rule. When you're drawing single bonds, the direction in which you draw them uh, doesn't really matter as long as you've got a zigzag structure. So here is 3-methylpentane again. And I showed you how to do it earlier like this. Of course, you could also do it like this. Or you could make it even more different with something like this. All are correct. What else could we do? What's important is that your longest carbon-carbon chain has five carbons, and there is a methyl group on number three. Rule number four is that you draw heteroatoms, and you draw the hydrogens attached to them, even though carbons are just corners, and the hydrogens are understood to be there for the carbons. So here, I've got one, two, three, four carbons. So that's one way to draw the bond line structure, right? Or I could go like this or I could go like that the possibilities are effectively uh, many rule number five is never have a carbon with more than four bonds if you do that you're breaking the octet rule so, for instance, if you ever draw something that looks like this, there are five bonds on that carbon. You know it is incorrect. So, if you draw something that has five bonds to a carbon, you've got to start over.